Hello and welcome to Marine Life News and Views. I am Devashish Bas. CNC Towers Limited is a bankrupt company which went into a major project development. In 2009, it had signed an agreement with Greater Mohali Area Development Authority for an interstate bus terminal to towers, five-star hotel, banquet, banquet hall, and so on and so forth. A major multi-purpose multiplex, including, of course, a helipad on top of them. Now, as, as happened to many such projects of that time, it went bankrupt. It went into debt liquidation, it went into liquidation and, and was admitted for what is called resolution. On 19th October last week, the Chandigarh bench of the National Company Law Tribunal, that is NCLT, passed an order. Now, that order shows, if you read the order, it shows how scandalous the debt resolutions are despite grand claims that the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code, which was passed in 2016, would lead to a significant change in the way bankrupt companies are handled. The NCLT order says that against an admitted claim of over 579 crore, the resolution plan could provide for only 81.5 crore or just 14.08%. Commenting on the meager recovery, a bankruptcy expert says, I have not come across such a loot in any urban infrastructure project. How did this happen? The same way thousands of other projects have been bankrupted, which is collusion between bankers and borrowers. The moment CCTL bagged the large multiplex project, it trans started transferring money to its related parties, companies within the same group. Almost 111 crore went as pre-construction advance and 63.3 crore as mobilization advance to CNC Construction Company, which is a listed company that also has gone bankrupt. The bankers did not stop this. As always, a bunch of public sector banks were involved. In this case, State Bank of India, State Bank of Hyderabad, State Bank of Patiala, Punjab National Bank and Punjab and Sindh Bank. They sanctioned money in November 2010 and CNC Towers also collected 490 crore as customer advances from 400 property buyers. Construction was delayed leading to Greater Mohali Authority issuing a termination notice in April 2016 and confiscating bank guarantees worth almost 12 crore. The corporate insolvency process started in 2019, that is 10 years after the project's project was sanctioned. The initial aggregate claims of all the creditors were admitted to be 580 crore plus, while capital and work in progress was put at almost 400 crore. However, the actual allocation for creditors, fixed deposit holders, allottees, GMAD itself, statutory dues altogether under the resolution plan turned out to be just 14%. What were the bankers doing all this while? What were the engineers doing while the project was, the money was given as pre-mobilization, pre-construction mobilization advance? The answer is crystal clear in all such bankruptcy cases, especially in real estate involving public sector banks. But it is one that we don't want to see, which is rampant fraud and corruption by everybody involved. Consider these details of related party transactions. CCTL had extended an advance, as I said, of 35% of the contract price to CNC. The transaction auditor had pointed out that the general business or industry practice is just about 15 to 20% of the contract value, not 35%. As much as 26 crore of the advance is still unadjusted against construction. CCTL had also made an excess payment of 41 crore to CNC over and above the bills and mobilization advances allowed. No lender approval had sought had been sought for this payment, but the bankers are unconcerned. As, as for the terms of the contract, CCTL has a right had a right to impose a, impose and levy liquidated damages of up to 0.25% of the contract value per week or part of a week of a maximum of 5% of the total value, that is 15.82 crores in case of default by the contractor, in this case CNC or related party but this was not done. The work was scheduled to be completed within 18 and 30 months from December 16, 2019 for ISPT, that is Interstate Bus Terminal and the Hotel and Commercial Complex respectively. But despite inordinate delay, CCTL has not imposed any liquidated damages on CNC. 
When IBC was operationalized, that is insolvency and bankruptcy court, there were strident assertions that it would lower bad debt and lead to faster resolution. Some even hoped for significantly higher recoveries. I have argued consistently and many times since 2016 that these are false expectations. The fact is that creditors have only been able to realize 17% of claims through the IBC process. A reply to a right to information query reveals that the government has written off 10 lakh crore as bad loans since 2014. The reason for this rampant fraud and corruption involving public sector banks leading to IBC cases. Fraud is pre-planned so that there is very little realizable value left once the entire thing comes out. CCTL promoters crafted a contract to drain substantial amounts of money from the project and have got away with it. The bankers and independent engineers of GMADA did not monitor the project and did nothing to prevent money from being drained off to group companies. They are primarily responsible for this fraud, but they got away too. Now, CCTL is one more example of my central point about IBC, which I have repeatedly made since 2016. The source of humongous bad loans that we currently see written off periodically has nothing to do with bankruptcy or any other laws as claimed by bankers such as Arundhati Bhattacharya, former SBI chairperson. She has said that if you have better laws, there'll be, there'll be fewer bankruptcies. It's absurd to make that argument. Yet there is wide, widespread opposition, even articulated by the former Reserve Bank of India, Raghuram Rajan, to criminal action against bankers because they would like to label these frauds as normal business failures. Meanwhile, the resolution process itself is a big mess. Other orders are arbitrary and contradictory. All cases are way behind deadlines. The Supreme Court even had to issue two members of the national of, of the of NCLAT, that is Na National Company Law Appellate Tribunal, a, a possible contempt notice because they had ignored Supreme Court's instructions, specific instructions about not to issue an order in re recent case of Phenolex cables. The root case, the root, the root cause of all of this mess lies in the public sector banks. If they are made accountable, bad loan cases will come down dramatically, recoveries will rise, NCLT and NCLT will not be clogged by so many cases and will become extremely manageable. Strangely, this government and all other previous governments have been uninterested in fixing the way the public sector banks work. That's all for today. If you liked it, please do share and do subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.